issue there a minute ago. And we'll start recording again. So now we're finally here. <laughs> Hello, Lauren. Hi. How nice are you? you? I'm well. How are you? Excellent. Glad you're here with us. And Hillary, hello to you. Hi. And I realized I'm not on screen. <laughs> so I'm seeing both of you and I'm going, oh, you guys look great. And then I'm thinking, oh, I'm not even, I'm like, I'm like this voice coming in from above. <laughs> <laughs> you look great too, Julie. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. So um, welcome to virtual, like when you came in the green room, I was like, welcome to virtual Warwicks. We are still in this virtual space, but um, we're also doing some very few live events at the store. So hopefully one of these days we'll have you back at the store, Lauren. I would love to. Uh, it's one of my favorite bookstores. Thank you. It's, we appreciate that. So um, so tonight, just real quick, we won't take up too much time because we started a little bit late. So I'm going to pop into this really quickly here. Uh, for those of you that are joining us on YouTube, we're recording this YouTube. None of this applies to you right now, but just stay tuned because this is going to be a great conversation. So stick with us. But those of you that are live on Facebook with us right now in the comment section, I'm going to be putting in a link to Hillary's book just so for you. I'm um, sorry, Lauren's book. I looked at Hillary's name and said it. And I was like, that's the power of suggestion. Link to there. Hillary's book too. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I could do that too. Um, the, but what we're here to talk about tonight is the energy to heal. And so I'll put a link in the in the comment section. For those of you who are joining us and maybe don't know where Warwick's is, we're located in La Jolla, San Diego, um, just a little bit north of San Diego. And so if you're in the San Diego area, you can click on that link and choose to pick up in store. And we'd love to see in the store. It's really fun to, to shop in Warwick's. It's one of the iconic stores here in, in San Diego. Um, but we also learned in the pandemic, people learned that independent bookstores can actually ship books. So, <laughs> so if you're joining us from somewhere else, please click on that and um, purchase Lauren's book from us and we can get that to you. In that comment section as well is where you're going to put any questions or comments that you have for Lauren or Hillary. And I'm going to feed those into Hillary. And so if you have anything, just let us know. And as soon as you have it, we love the audience interaction. So please let us know um, any comments or questions you might have. So let's get started. Lauren Walker has been teaching yoga and meditation since 1997 and created energy medicine yoga while teaching at Norwich University, the oldest private military college in the country. I did not know that. She now teaches EM yoga. Uh, is that how you say it or is it M yoga? Okay. Across the U.S. and internationally. She is frequently quoted and cited as an expert in Yoga Journal, Mantra Magazine, and Yoga Digest, and the New York Times published a feature article about her yoga work. Her two previous books, The Energy Medicine Yoga Prescription and Energy Medicine Yoga Amplify the Healing Power of Your Yoga Practice, both won the Nautilus Silver Award for Best Mind Body Publication. In 2016, she was named one of the top 100 most influential yoga teachers in America. So welcome and thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So she's here, like I said, to talk about the energy to heal and joining her is Hillary Crowley. Hillary discovered the healing arts as the grandchild of three doctors. In her early career, she worked as a pediatric continuing education and recruitment specialist at both University of Massachusetts Medical Center and Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center. Since 1995, she has studied with leaders in energy medicine and medical intuition. Hillary teaches on topics of energy, medicine, and health throughout New England, New York, and abroad. She is the pre- and post-operative energy care provider working with the Wentworth Douglas Hospital's Integrative Care Center. She lives in Dover, New Hampshire. We didn't find out. Lauren, where are you calling in from? I'm from Montana right now, Northwest Montana. There you go. All right, ladies, have a great event. We'll see you in a little bit. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julie. Thank you, Warwick's, for hosting us. Thank you, Hillary, for agreeing to come on here and, and interview me. I'm really excited to be here with you. You're on mute. That I, I went on mute because I was like commenting on everything Julie was saying. I'm like, okay, I don't want to interrupt her, but I am so excited to be here. Lauren, um, this book needs to be celebrated. It is out. You got it out. You got it out. Yeah. And and it's truly a book that I'm going to pack like in my car, have it with me. You created a toolkit for not just me as an energy worker, but for doctors and nurses and anybody going into their everyday life. You've created everyday language 
for something that for centuries we haven't been able to articulate. I love your writing. I love you as a teacher. I love you as a, a yoga teacher, a practitioner. And I'm just, um, I just want to absorb, and I know everyone out there too just wants to absorb everything you have to offer us in these next 40 minutes or so. Like what, what are, while you have us here, what's your, what's your hope is, is the takeaway as, as you're launching this beautiful book into the world with us tonight? Hmm. Gosh, Hillary, thank you. That was so beautiful. Um, you know, my hope really is kind of already coming true with this book. You talked about these simple tools and there is a really, it's a program that you do and it really lays it out there. And if you, um, if you work in the intellectual range, you like to think about things and workshop ideas and problems like I do, I'm very much in my mind. It gives you that pathway. If you don't want to talk about it, you don't want to go back into your stress response or your trauma response. You don't have to go back into story. You can do the practices and release the energy that way. So it's sort of two track path on this really powerful tool that is kind of your compass, your guiding tool. And I say it's already come true because I've already had two people and the book's only been out. I don't know what's today, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday. It's only been out a few days. Two people um, contact me and say, it already works. I used the tool. I overlaid it. I did exactly what you said. I went back and forth with, I, I flipped to the section. I got it. I pulled it out and like got the answer they needed and released like two big things. And so I was like, okay, it's real. It's working. Yay. So that's the takeaway. It's a tool. You're going to use it again and again and again, and it's really easy to apply. When, it's also really well written, Lauren. I've got to say, it's like, it's really a joy to read. When I think about something that's going to just, you just know is going to be successful, you know, because I read a lot of books. I, I love, I love my books. Um, you know, something's going to be successful when it has a tool, it's, it's giving us tools, but it's also like a pleasure to read. And when I first started reading it, um, I was really taken by the way you articulated energy and its relationship with movement. Can you, can you share that a little bit? And then, and then, um, you know, you're going to do your thing because I can't imagine you're just going to sit, you know, like this, you're, you're the mover, you're the one who moves, but before you, you start moving, can you, I, I wanted to ask you in your own words, you already wrote it beautifully in the book, but since I have you here, you talked about how energy needs moving and energy moves. It's it's such a it's such a hook for me, um, and I think for everyone else as they as they as they dive into this book. So that really is the crux of everything. And to understand and explain what energy is, is kind of the like the monumental lift in the book. And once you get that, whew, everything is smooth sailing. It's sort of like learning a language. And when you start to learn a language, it just feels like impenetrable, like you'll never get it. And you can maybe you see a couple words, maybe if the letters are the same, if you're not learning like a language that's in Cyrillic or a whole different, you know, script. OK, those letters I know and little bits and, and little bits. And then at some point, if you really immerse yourself in it, you enter into a fluency. So energy is the same thing. Energy is the substrate from which everything arises. And this is the part that your head kind of goes like, what is she talking about? It is all that exists, the entire universe, everything within the universe at the atomic level, subatomic level, Planckian level at the very tiniest, tiniest bits of everything is just fluctuations in the field. It's just movement. It's just patterns. It's sound, it's vibration, it's light. It is the vibration of everything and these vibrations start to uh, bounce against each other spin against each other create charge separation that separation makes them spin that spin densifies them into form and flash forward many 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 calculations later and the physical structures that are us appear it's just appearance though because we really aren't the solid beings that it feels like we are Okay, so that's like a big lift for your mind to get through. Like, I feel solid, but she's telling me I'm only energy. And that is the piece where I spend so much time studying with these scientists and um, ancient masters who are all saying the same thing, which I love. I love that ancient traditions and modern science are merging together and acknowledging that each one is true. 
And so that once we really can understand that, we have a way of, of speaking with and moving that energy in a much easier way than it is to move the physical form. Moving the energy preceding the physical form is that. And moving the physical form is like, oh, I've got some pushback and it, it's not as easy. So it's not as easy to transform. So part of my work is really explaining those metaphors so that you understand them as the actual truth of what exists. It's not metaphorical. You are only energy. And when you can work with that energy, the finest, most diffuse part of yourself, everything transforms. I, I know exactly what you're talking about um, because in what I'm, why I'm appreciating um, your book so much is that I work with the energy with people who can come in who are um, struggling. They're recovering from trauma. They're in the middle of chemotherapy. They are, um, they're sent to me by their parents. You know, like that, that's the work that I do. And I can't explain it all the time. And I actually don't spend time going into that side of our mind. But I do think it's a great disservice up until this moment that we weren't able to bring this into mainstream consciousness. And once you can explain something, I mean, you've seen that, Lauren, like when you're stuck on something, but once, you, when it, once it's put into words and articulated, um, it changes, it, it's, an, it's empowering. And why do you think, this is just riffing with you, why do you think energy became, became something, you know, that was kind of taboo to talk about? Or, I mean, it's hard to imagine in my world because everyone seems to want to talk about it. But even when my book was coming out, a lot of people said, oh, be careful. You're going to have a lot of people that are going to, you know, not want to be associated with it. Or if you ask a doctor, you know, to quote, I'm like, I haven't found that, but there's that belief that there's some kind of a taboo there. What, what's up with the belief in the taboo of energy? Any thoughts? Any mm -hmm. thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the first thing that is that taboo is so Western medicine and Western science is primarily dominated by the mechanistic viewpoint, which is you measure something and then you can track it and you can quantify it and and um, divide it and add it. And, like it's very specific um, in a mechanistic way, like a car has all of these parts and you put them together in this specific way and then the car runs. And if a part is broken, you take that part out and you put that part back in. It's Newtonian, and Newtonian, right? It's very Newtonian, exactly, yeah. it's very okay. Newtonian. And when you start to talk about energy outside of the physics idea of energy, right? Which is like the amount of work something is capable of doing. That's the physics definition of energy. But when you start to talk about it in the quantum idea and in the ancient um, spiritual texts ideas, then it's something very different. Then it goes back to uh, that it is the substrate of what everything arises from and it's movement and it's sound and it's light and it's all that is. And, um, and we have fields around us because we are electric beings and anything that's electrical has an electromagnetic field around it. Okay. And okay. We start to talk about fields and all of this stuff that starts to feel like, well, how do I measure that? Can I measure a field? Well, now actually there are ways to measure fields. And um, the one of the energy systems of the body called the aura historically has now been uh, quantified by Western science. They call it the biofield. Right. Oh, yeah. And they can measure it. OK, so now that we can start to measure things, maybe we're going to start to bridge them a little bit more. But for the longest time, we couldn't measure these these energies. And therefore, those strict mechanists just said they don't exist. If you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. Ah. And then the results that people have and have been having for thousands of years we couldn't give you the mechanism of how it worked. So you did something in your field and then you healed. And well, I can't tell you why or how exactly that happened. What pathway did that molecule go through, right? I can't explain it like that to you. And so I can't then package it. I can't replicate it. I can't sell it to you. I can't insure it. I can't like all of those things that are part of the Western paradigm. Can't I can't defend it if you know, yeah. Yeah, I can't defend it. It doesn't always work for everybody. And so then it becomes this thing that, okay, well, if I can't quantify it and um, categorize it and percentageize it and all of those things, give my all my stats on it, then it doesn't exist. It's not real. I want nothing to do with that. Uh -huh. Instead of taking 
um, these uh, the anomalies that energy presents, things like um, the placebo effect. And instead of saying, oh, that's messing up all my experiments and it skews all my numbers, everything should be turned to, this is a powerful system. Why don't we just study placebo effect and create healing modalities through the placebo effect okay, instead hold of on, like, hold on, hold on. okay. What do you mean? How does placebo effect connect to energy? I know what you're talking about, but for people out there, when, what, what is that beautiful simplicity of the placebo effect, which helps us talk about energy more, more clearly. So placebo effect is a belief system and your beliefs are energy. What you believe changes. So you take a sugar, so you take a sugar pill instead of a prescribed medicine. That's right. And you believe the sugar pill is going to heal you and it does. And the uh -huh. studies and stories of placebo, people have placebo surgeries and yes. they heal. No surgery has been performed and they heal as if the surgery that they believe they were getting has actually taken place. That's insane. The power of the mind to transform the physical body just by thought and belief alone, that should be studied. That should be the first line of defense of every doctor. First, I'm just going to give you this sugar pill that says I'm going to heal you and come back to me in six weeks and see if you're healed. I think the percentage of people healed just from that would be astronomical. But then the whole, you know, financial system of healthcare goes pear shaped. Yeah. I, I think, I think, I think healthcare is ready for it. I definitely think, especially when you write a book like this, that's easy to easy to explain, easy to uh, break it down and to say, you know, here are some things you can do at home that are that are safe. Lauren Walker wrote about this. She's been doing this for 20 plus years. Um, I, I'm, I really do. I want to I want to go to that other model of supply and demand for everybody out there. So on any given day, at any given moment, we're on a journey of a challenge, right? We're faced with a challenge. And that challenge, it's really cool. And you write about it. it. It can be, you can get it the hard way or the easy way, right? And and the easy way to me, I know maybe I shouldn't have used the word easy, but maybe I should ease. Like we want to be able to access, I guess, you know, I said this book is the tools, but the truth is, Lauren, you wrote a book that told me that this is the tools. This is the tools, right? These are the tools. And I, I can't thank you enough for that. So I'm thinking about people who are, what is it? They're, they're getting through their evening. Maybe there's something at home they have to deal with or a big meeting in the morning, or they got really tough news today. Um, maybe they know they're going in for, you know, surgery tomorrow. Um, I, I could list it off. It's, it's not necessary. The human condition is this, as you also articulate, is this beautiful ebb and flow of challenge result in healing, challenge result in healing. One of my favorite things that you said is that some of it we just do naturally like this, right? We get, we, you know, this is the universal message for like, I just got big news, right? But you broke it down and explained it to us. I love that. There's so much more that you do in the book. So to my question is, when you need Lauren, since we have you here, we have you here. When you get the jitters or you get triggered and you want to show up in your, as your best self, what are some things that you do? Um, I'll speak for myself. I um, had a conversation with a wise person that I trust. And I said, there's a situation under over here that's making me angry. And I do not want to address it with anger. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's kind. I don't think it's the right thing to do. But boy, do I feel, it's okay to feel anger in my body, right, Lauren? I feel it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel it. And 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 it's just part of the part of the information, right? And then I want to know what you do or what you would have me do to, sure, I can talk it through. I can intellectualize. Um but what would you have my body do when I feel it right here? And I, and I really don't want it to take three hours to get over myself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you really sort of hit the nail on the head of how much time we spend in the intellectual part of it. 
yeah. thinking, I don't want to feel this way, but I feel this way. I don't want, okay, I'm going to think about something else. Nope, that's the only thing I'm going to think about. No, nope, I'm going to think about, nope, you're going to think about this. You're going to stew on it. You're going to rip it apart. He said that, but he didn't mean that, but maybe he did. But then she said, but right, we spin, we spin, we spin, we spin. And you can do that forever. And eventually you might be able to talk yourself through to like what you need to do. But like you said, let's just cut to the chase. You need to release that physical imprint of that anger that you're feeling so that you can discover intelligently what the next steps are that you need to do. And so if you're feeling anger, and this is what this friend of mine today, she was like, I love it. I'm doing it. I'm doing exactly what you said. I'm going to, I'm feeling anxiety. I'm flipping to the fire section. So if you're feeling oh, yeah. anger, you're going to flip to the wood section and you're going to find the peak pose for anger. And you're going to do that peak pose. And that happens to be expelling the venom. That's how poisonous anger is. It's called venom in your body. So you do that pose, you move the anger out. If that doesn't resolve it for you in that moment, um, then you take it to the mat and you do the full wood practice. Okay, this is something that's really like, I am really angry about this. It's not just a passing thing. Somebody cut me off in line and I'm just going to do that blowout, right? Actually, this is something deeper. So you, you're on a, a continuum with, with how much information that that emotion is trying to give you. If the information is like, I just get so annoyed when someone cuts in front of me. Okay, that's one thing. You can blow that out probably pretty quickly, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. But if it's like, you know, I have been put upon for so long on the same thing. Everyone always is, right? That's a longer thing. That's a longer story. It's got deeper barbs in. Then you need to spend a little bit more time on the practice to like pull those, those barbs are energetic. Those emotional barbs are energetic, but they also become physical if you don't release them energetically. And that's when they lead to disease in the body. Unprocessed emotion is the number one cause of stress in the body. Stress is the number one cause of disease in the body. Unprocessed emotion is the number one cause of disease in the body. So you can process it intellectually. You can process it somatically. Either way, you got to get it out. Okay, here, I'm going to hold up this star that you were talking about for everybody to see. Um, you've done such a beautiful job organizing. Can I call them ancient practices? Ancient wisdom? It's absolutely ancient. I mean, five element theory is one of the energy systems in energy medicine yoga, and it is 5000 years old from ancient Chinese medicine. So the beautiful thing about this is like, I didn't in invent out of thin air, like, here's some cool things. I think you should try. It might work, but it might not, because I just invented it like five minutes ago. Yeah. These are 5,000 year old traditions, yoga, Chinese medicine, these Celtic, uh, uh, Celtic practices that we do. These are old, they're in our body, they're in our cell, cellular memory, they're in the atomic structure of the universe. The structures that arise in your body that inform the physical form, these energy fields, are the same structures that arise in the universe. They circle the sun, they circle the planets, these huge fields of energy. We are the same as that. And we have access to that level of wisdom and the possibility of that level of transformation. You, you, you rocked it. You wrote, you wrote the book that organizes it. I think it's because it's time has come. I don't, I think we, we we're in the middle of a communication. We're so in the middle of it. We don't realize we're in the middle of it. We're in the middle of a communication revolution. And we're finally able to put ideas together and understand East and West. That was actually kind of a far out idea, even 20 years ago. What are you talking Absolutely. about? You know, yeah. um, I get a fun question for people who love to read and love to write and love to talk to authors. Um, so this book was a journey for you to create, I would imagine, isn't it for everybody, you know, who writes and it's, and you take us on a journey. While you were on this journey of bringing 5,000 year old information, information from existing um, wisdom on this planet and, and, and calling it into this, into this book and, and made it, made it joyful to read. What surprised you on the way? Like, what were your, did you have a discovery about yourself um, along the way that you didn't expect? Wow, I mean, that's a huge question. I know, um, well, take your time. <laughs> <You're not a laughs> rush. <laughs> um, you know, I, I will share this because it's very humbling. And, and what I'm finding sadly is that it's not unique. 
Okay. And that not uniqueness made me, I felt it. So um, part of the journey, and when you read the book, you see like each chapter is like, okay, here's a, here's a tool, here's a tool. You need to weave these together and, and your, your, your basket is full, your net, whatever metaphor you want to use, right? Your, I, I use the sparking the lights, right? So you can light up all of the bulbs. Um, and one of those pieces is to heal, you need to love yourself. You need wow. to love yourself. <laughs> and one of the things that is so interesting, because I don't just do this work from the intellectual or the somatic, but I also check in with the, the higher intelligence of the body, which transcends anything that I know, right? And, and you know, doing practices, um, and, I, and I teach this in actually my second book, The Energy Medicine Yoga Prescription, is a, a technique called energy testing or applied kinesiology, where you test the wisdom of the body. The body never lies. The brain constantly, it's constantly lying. You're not good enough. You're not worthy, whatever. The body, you know, but the body doesn't lie. So where I'm coming with this is the brain. Still, I want to say less consistently, but it still comes up of, I don't love myself. Uh. I don't love myself. And I'm like, all the work, all the challenges, all the struggles, all the everything. And I'm like, when that comes up, I'm like, seriously, you still don't love yourself? How is this possible? Okay, so I'm a wood element. So I go, my first response to anything is anger. So that when that comes up that I don't love myself, I get mad. I'm like, how could I not love myself? God, and I go into the like, I'm angry that I don't love myself, okay? So this is one of the beauties of five element theory. You learn who you are. And so I can, I, I can laugh about it now, but it's so funny. Like that, that's the response that I have. I don't love myself. And then I'm mad at myself for not loving myself. So I'm going to circle around to this, but this came up. I reconnected with a friend, a dear friend, um, a dear love friend from long ago. And he was going through super challenging times. Also very much on the spiritual path has been a teacher, all of this stuff. And he's, uh, is he a little bit older than I, I don't know. We're maybe similar ages. And he's gone through some really hard stuff in the last few years, as we all have. And he just sent me um, a, a Facebook message a few months ago saying, I think I got to the next layer of loving myself. And I was like, oh my God, all of us, like no matter where you are, no matter, you know, we look to these spiritual teachers that they have it all together. But the truth is we're all on the journey. We're all doing the best we can in every moment. And life is a continual abundance of both challenges and beauty and grace. And that piece that challenges you or me in this instance, it's like Ram Dass said this, you've got to love your monsters. You can't push them away. You've got to yeah. love them. So I have a monster that's like, I'm not, I'm not lovable. And instead of being like, you dang, you monster, get out of here. I hate you, unloving monster. It's like, oh, okay, little monster, I'm going to give you some love. I get it. I don't love that little monster. I got to give that monster some love. And so I go to these tools. I go to the earth element and I fall back in love with myself and I give permission for that. And I forgive myself for that not loving myself and you know just like you would do with a child just like you would do with a best friend or a partner you would embrace them and say you are lovable until they then felt that within themselves so that surprised me that that still comes up even a little bit and it's less and less but i would be lying if i told you it never came up anymore i would be lying i feel like the idea of healing which is right in your in your book energy to heal i feel like healing is like a great courtship with yourself you know we get we have to get to know each other more like we're kind of it, it the healing is the way of falling in love and you know from relationships and family it's 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 you can't just say oh i love you and then leave you alone for six months or six years or you know it, it, it's 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 like you said with the energy it's always moving right and so writing this book helped you fall more in love with yourself or understand it a little bit more just understanding healing did the writing this book help your healing oh i wrote this book 
this book, <laughs> I wrote this book for myself. I didn't write this book for you, Hill. I didn't write this book. I'm being totally honest. I did not write this book for all of you out there. Okay. I wrote this book because I was at the bottom of the well, the deepest drowningest, wanting to drown just everything at the absolute nadir of everything. And then I went even lower than that. Okay. And it was like, okay, I've got an option here. And the option is I'm going to stay here, which is a horrible place, or I'm going to take every tool I know, and I'm going to have to get some new ones. And I'm going to have to figure out how to rise up from that well and how to re spark my light so that I can live in this world again. That first law, I just need to survive. And then, okay, I got to survive. Okay, now I might need to just make it one step towards like good. Then it was like, okay, three steps towards good. Could I, could I thrive? And then it was like, okay, this work has lifted me up. I got my wings back. I'm good. I got my sparks going. I'm flying. And it was like, at that point, I had written all these things down because I'm a writer. So it was like, these are all the things that I did to get myself out from death store to like teaching yoga again out in the world, being back in my body in my with friends and family again. And that was it. And I had all this stuff written down and, um, and you, Hillary, let's just tell it like it is. That book was in the garbage can. I was done. And you said, could I look at it? And I was like, I don't know, it's in the garbage can, but sure, I took it out of the garbage can, I sent it to you. And you are the one that said, you need to publish this book because this can help a lot of people. So I it's love because book. of you that that book is out. I wrote that book because I needed to heal. And you're the reason anyone else well, has. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, I. I, I can't even imagine it in the garbage pail. I think uh, I maybe a drawer like, but like, you know, I'm glad it, I'm glad they didn't take the trash out. Let's say this because I am on my own journey with healing myself, just like we all are. I also work. Um, I work a few different ways. One of the ways is I work with traumatized children. That's part of my life. Um, kids who have been traumatized they don't know what it's like to be in a body without trauma. Um, and you'd be surprised how few resources are out there. Actually, you would be surprised. It's just, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't languaged yet. You know, it wasn't languaged yet. And I'm so proud of, I'm actually proud of me. I'm helping to language it. You're helping to language it. And so many more of our peers out there that are truly languaging the ineffable, right? The beyond words and bringing it back into the body and, and into movement. Um, but you're also a great storyteller. Like you tell a good story. I, I, I enjoyed reading it. It wasn't just like, you have to do this. This, this book is really for everybody out there. This book is enjoyable to read. Um, you talk about, you use wonderful examples. You put these morsels, like really golden, golden gems in there that, you know, you're going to circle. And as I said, I'm like, I'm keeping this on the driver's seat and I'm getting, I'm keeping this one in my office. Um, Lauren, you also did a beautiful job showing us how we move. So on the cover, find its energy to heal, find lasting freedom from stress and trauma through the energy, through energy medicine yoga. So I actually move, I, I actually do energy work. I see, I've seen thousands of clients. I see them every day of my life and I heal with the hands. And it's actually kind of important. I found that yoga is a nice way. It's in my job description. I do yoga so that my tools will be ready to help other people with their tools. Um, what you have done is you've created a way with or without a yoga mat, with or without even the word yoga, things I can do on the drive into, into work, things I can do after maybe a tough, you know, budgeting conversation with my husband or when one of the kids, you know, didn't have breakfast and slammed the door on the way out the door. I still, in my integrity, right? I'm able to pull in so much healing just to help a little bit or a lot of it. So what I wanted to do, because I'm excited to show everybody this, um, you did such a beautiful job. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull up an image that maybe you can, you can show us. Um, bringing down the flame, Lauren, bringing down the flame. 
bringing down the flame. I love the illustrations. It reminds me that, you know, sometimes I get the New Yorker or a magazine and I just flip through the illustrations and you've given us these beautiful illustrations. Bringing down the flame. What's bringing down the flame, Lauren? What is that? <laughs> well, that's like a perfect one for uh, for where we are in the world right now. Bringing down the flame is a movement to uh, release anxiety. But more than that is to really kind of, uh, it literally what it is, is bringing down the, the fire, bringing down the temperature and coming back into your center where you can um, operate from with more ease so that you're not in that wildfire burning out of control, but you're in the, the pilot light where you are ready to, to spark or you're in the campfire or you're in you know the hearth cooking the soup over the, the flame. The this flame is isn't burning down your house. So this is a movement. It's a series of movements, yep. A series of movements and sounds. Okay. So the movements um, were designed by Donna Eden and the okay. sounds come from ancient Chinese medicine. And when mm -hmm. I say designed by Donna Eden, um, I mean, after, through her years of clinical study, watching the way people moved in their body and how it moved emotions out of their body is how, because Donna sees energy. So she can see you, if you come into your office and you're full of anxiety and you can't really get anything else done until that moves out, she could see, okay, if you do this, the anxiety goes and you feel more inspired and more joyful and then we can do our work together. So um, so that's where she created that she from. Sees the colors, I just wanna talk for, the, for everyone listening. So you she sees colors she sees vibration she see what does she see you don't know because you're not you don't see what she i sees. don't know i mean i've talked to her a lot about what she sees we have nine distinct energy systems in the body yes, some of right them, about that yes yeah and some of them you're really familiar with if you studied any kind of yoga you might have heard of aura or chakras if you've ever got um, acupuncture you've heard of meridians um so we've got nine systems and what Donna says, I mean, and there's like, there's pathways through, so you could sort of envision what they might look like if you could see energy, like chakras are vortices, swirls yeah. of energy. So they, you know, there's drawings of what they appear to, but what, from my understanding of what Donna sees, she sort of sees all of them, light and color fluctuations, movement patterns through, you know, um, and what she sees is the system that you need to work on kind of jumps forward. So if you're feeling a lot of anxiety, chances are the system that works your fight, flight, freeze response, that's your stress response, that's your habituation response, that is the energy system that'll jump forward and give her information to know, okay. But here's what I want to say. It doesn't matter if you see energy or not. Like that's like a parlor trick. It's great. It's incredible. It's not a parlor trick, but like for those of us who don't see energy, it can seem like that. My point being that if you don't see energy, it doesn't matter because all of these paths have been mapped out. All of these movements have been mapped out. That is the beauty of this program is you just have to do the program. You don't have to yeah. think about it. You don't, I mean, you can, you can think about it. I give you the science behind it. That's great. If you want to like chomp on it that way, but if you're just like, I need help. Boom, yeah. do the program. It's right there. It's laid out. It's simple. It's easy. And like you said, it's joyful. It's not painful to uh, to work with your trauma and your stress and to release it. It's more painful not to release it. Oh, can you say that again? It is. Mo it takes more energy to hold your patterns of stress, to hold your traumas to you, to keep yourself together in the face of the awful stuff that you just don't want to look at because it's too big, it's too much, it's too scary, it's too dark. That's an awful lot of energy to just like keep that at bay so I can just like get through my day. It takes way less energy to release all of that and to be free from all of that. You just have to take that first step towards it, that desire to let it go, to, to, you know, to be the other person, the person that's not struggling and not suffering, because that's a mindset, a mind shift as well, right? Like, I'm no longer that stressed out person anymore. Like, who am I if I'm not stressed out? Then you have to kind of come up with a whole persona of like, this is me free. This is me joyful. Okay, let me try that on. Well, you said it right here in the book, finding, find lasting freedom from stress and trauma through energy medicine yoga. Lauren, this book is ready for us. We're finally ready to talk about stress, talk about trauma, and you've created a safe place to turn to, 
to say, I don't want to put all the energy or deplete all my energy by holding myself in a cage, freedom to set free. So I, I just thank you so much um, for writing this book, Lauren. Thank you for engaging me in the conversation. This is a tool that I'll use as an energy worker and I, and I can't thank you enough. Thank you, Hillary. It's such a joy speaking with you all the time. We could talk forever and I appreciate your time. I was going to say this conversation, I think could go on because it's so informative and it's so important. I mean, there's just so much that we take for granted what stress does to us. I mean, we just don't, we really don't appreciate how bad it is. Um, and so I appreciate you highlighting that for us. <laughs> that is, so as we wrap up tonight, such a great conversation. Hillary, for people who are watching, um, if they want to find out more from you, is there a website that you'd like to send people to or? Um, sure, it's my name. It's hillarycrowley.com. Um, okay. I have my handy dandy book right next to Lauren's. Um, Excellent. Our books came out kind of together. Um, I actually won the Nautilus Book Award for 2022. I don't have the <gasps> thing yet. That just got announced yesterday to all the award winners out there. Congratulations. So, um, and there's energy to it, right? There's energy, energy, energy. Um, it's just super cool. Thank you. You know, thank you so much. And I, I'm, I, I love talking about this. I, I love that um, Warworks helps elevate the conversation. We're going to look back at this a couple of years from now and be like, everyone's going to be talking about energy. Yeah, I know. Just, and I love being on the front end of that. <laughs> you were on the front end and we appreciate it, right, Lauren? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, our books, are, our, our pathways are so aligned. And, um, and also I'm going to plug Hillary a little bit because you all know how to find me energymedicineyoga.net. I was just going to ask, I was just going to say, where are we yeah. finding you? <laughs> energymedicineyoga.net, emyoga.net, buy the book through Warwick's, have this book, give this book away, pass it on. Yep. And in um, a few weeks, I am starting a companion course for the book. For those of you that like um, to do in-depth learning, like to do a visual learning, want to see these practices, want to have more live Q and A's with me. It starts on June, the first week of June, the first Tuesday of June and runs for seven weeks. You can learn all about it on my website, energymedicineyoga.net. And Hillary's also starting a course um, at the same exact time, our courses are running concurrently and she's working through the shift network. You can find information about it on her website. If you're a real energy junkie and you want to just dive deep and have these two teachings that really align so much, um, then you might want to consider taking both of those trainings. It's an hour and a half a day. You'll have it on Tuesday and Wednesday and really start to weave your synthesis of energy. And I think what Hillary's saying is true. This is only going to get more and more activated out there in the world, this idea of energy and energy healing. And Warwick's, you guys are just rock stars in elevating this conversation. It's so important. So thank you so oh, much. Thank you. And thank you both for your time. Um, can't wait to see both of these things just explode into the stratosphere. So, <laughs> so for that, good night, everybody. Thank night. You. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.